so today I'm going to talk about why play is the new PhD of the future. I'm going to start by telling you a little story. So this picture is actually a, a life-changing masterpiece. Um, there's three things about this picture. One, it's totally mundane. The second is it's totally tragic. And the third is totally transcendent. Does anyone notice anything unique about this picture? Just a throw of hand, like something? Two sons, good. So, two sons. Mundane picture drawn by a six-year-old kid. The tragic part is that the person in charge of the six-year-old kid at this period of time said that picture is wrong. You have to redraw that. No good, there are two sons. The six-year-old kid said, piss off. <laughs> I recognize, I'm, clearly I'm six, I get there's not two sons. I'm just like kind of having the concept here that that would look neat if there were. So why is it then that the education everyone received in this room and the one that our children are receiving today are in essence all the same thing that Sir Ken Robinson talked about, right? They're, it's, it's a system set up for check marks, basically. Hoop jumping. I, I have some fancy pieces of paper and I'm not ashamed of them, um, but I will say they're just kind of for smart monkeys, right? So I jump hoops well is kind of what, all I can tell you about those fancy pieces of paper. And so ultimately you can Google anything that it took me a lot of years and a lot of money to get from those fancy pieces of paper now. So what's interesting about that is people think that's great, but uh, I think it's obsolete. And so I stand up here with a lot of uh, accolades and great things, and, um, but what I know is that my child and the children around her and all of us are basically Googleable. And so what separates, what I believe will separate our children and can save ourselves from being totally obsolete, and in case you don't know, obsolescence is that you're still in good working order but totally useless, essentially, which I feel I'm in pretty good working order. Um, but becoming more useless when I don't do this certain thing. And so the key to it is that we have to spend time with our kids doing this one very pivotal thing. And I mentioned the difference between our kids and ourselves. So if you're born roughly before 1995, you got this kind of education outside of school and you'll cue into what it is as I go along. If you weren't, uh, we have to go and save those kids. So that Ken Robinson speech was in 2006, it was roughly seven years ago, so what we all know is that education hasn't changed tremendously since then. Although it's writing itself, right? The ship is trying to move, but it's big, it's like the Titanic, you know? It takes a while. And so what I'm here to talk about is the fact that we all can do something about it. I'm also here to show you this. I was that girl who, who drew that picture naturally, I think you suspected that. And when I told that, Auntie Flo was her name to piss off. I also started choosing my own haircuts. <laughs> haircuts and clothes, right? It went on. So what happened in my life, and, and Ken Robinson speaks to this, is that I was judged by a system that didn't judge me well for what I'm good at. I'm not a scholar. I am not the smartest person there ever was. I don't fit into, you know, the stream. I did not well at school. I have some classmates here who can attest to the fact that I didn't do well. Um, I applied to 13 MBA schools and got into one. And the only reason I got into the one was, and I quote from the woman who let me in, I saw it sitting on the top of the no pile and it looked so different I had to read it. And then I put it in the yes pile. And so what I'm talking about is something that we've all lost. Generally, age advanced people in the audience may say that's our marbles, which is true. That's exactly what we've lost, right? We've lost our marbles, we've lost our ability to play. And when I talk about play, I'm not talking about, you know, hitting a ball with a bat or whatever you think. I'm talking about, well, the definition of play is to engage in an activity for the enjoyment of it, not for any rightful purpose. And so that in and of itself is what we don't do anymore. If you think about your mind, it's, it, it's yourself, right? And when do you, as yourself, in a state of mental play, get a word in edgewise between your meeting at three o'clock and your conference call and I have to put the laundry away and whatever your story is. And so the play factor for all we adults who actually used to play, like we get it, we did it, is there but it's buried. And for our kids, 
And this, I'll call myself out on this because my kid is his kid. So, I mean, I don't want anyone Googling me after and then saying, hey, she, you know, she's a hypocrite. You know, Montessori, educated, two language speaking, sport playing, taking music lessons, little programmed superhuman. But quite frankly, all, all she's being educated in is mediocrity because every kid is like that now. She's not exceptional at all. She's just the baseline. And what I know through my experience is that any time I've been outwardly successful and inwardly successful, it's been when I've been at a state of play and I've converted on what is unique and genuine in my mind, the thing that I love to do where I'm not doing it for a deliverable, I'm doing it because it's just what I love to do and I'm kicking at doing it. Better than the people who are doing it for the deliverable. And I know that if that dancer that he talked about, or my child at doing whatever she is, if I can introduce her to a state of play, for me it's the way I think. For her it may be something different. But it's taken the time for us to recognize that in our children and provide them the space to do it. Instead of you know rushing her to another soccer practice or some other thing, which I will do anyway. But the point being is that if there's an X factor of the future, that's it, it's play. It's not all the stuff that we're feeding them that they can Google or a nice piece of paper they can light a match to later. This is some fancy stuff about me now, right? There's the ugly kid before, okay looking kid later. This is me in a photo shoot for Chatelaine magazine and this is my family. And these are the kids I'm talking about. Everybody has a kid in their life. What's interesting is that the system that judges my kids and that judge me, it's all the same. There was a, there's a clever lady. So Barbara Kerr is at the University of Kansas and she decided instead of trying to check boxes on kids, let's figure out what future innovators, future X factor kids have. Like what are the traits that can define people who are gonna think independently, ingenuitively and all those kind of things. And it fundamentally all funneled back to what play teaches us, which is independent thinking, confidence, creativity, leadership, third-party perspective, right? I can understand how you're feeling and react to it. And these children all exhibited high levels of those things, which are all derivatives of play, the play mentality. Not being in play, right? A guy working on the Human Genome Project, two guys, one's in play, one's not. You know, it's torture for the second guy. But the point being is, where do we get that? So I think people think, okay, well, my kids play sports. There's play in that. But frankly, we've changed sport into a deliverable, right? Two kids playing hockey. One's there because he's going to be the next superstar. He's got to deliver so many points, blah, blah, blah. So f sport's been turned in to a product for a deliverable. My kid takes piano lessons. She's given a piece, memorizes, spit it out, same as school. The real point around, is around how do we change ourselves? Because all kids think we are the smartest thing going, and we think we're pretty good too. Wait, we all do. How do we change ourselves so that we can build a system where we don't have to wait for the education system to write itself, right? Seven years later, nothing really fundamentally has changed. My children aren't doing anything playful that they were, that was happening before. So what it's all about is basically three or four things for us as adults. The first thing is recognizing in ourselves our ability to do it and that we all once did it which incorporates a few things. It's allowing ourselves to expose ourselves to our own unique interests, right? And don't get caught up in like the, the daily mentality of everything that we have to do, all the deliverables that there are, right? There's this clever guy named Bo Lotto at the Lotto Lab at the University of London, and he said, okay, the way that we educate people is because they, so they become very clever at one specific, very focused thing. So if, you, if a bus is gonna be coming at you, you don't wanna be creative, you wanna be an expert in buses coming at you. But the point of that is like, who knows if a bus is gonna come at you, so why do we wanna try and forecast what it is that's gonna happen to us two years out when we know we can't do that? What we wanna be is nimble and creative and in a state of mental play, right? Be open to what's around us and able to act on that. So for our kids, we have to provide them an opportunity to see us doing that. That's the first thing. The second thing is we have to grow up. We have to get over ourselves and all our judgment, 
crap, our shoulds and our masking and our vulnerability issues and all these other things because children think that we are amazing no matter what we're doing. It's our own selves that limit it. Kids will say, hey, come and play with me. And you say, no, I'm too busy. I'm on my Blackberry. I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And it's kind of like being at a party, you know, that one guy who's in the corner and not having fun and everybody's looking at him like, seriously, come join us. It's a lot of fun. And you think he's a big loser because he doesn't get the, doesn't get the joke. And that's what your kids think about you. <laughs> no, they do. That's just, I'm sorry. And so, yeah, so we have to grow up and get over a lot of the things about ourselves so that we can engage in those kind of activities. And the other thing is we have to make time. Like, the average toddler today watches two hours of television uh, every day. So by the end of a week, that's two full productive work days of playtime that that child's lost if we're talking productivity mindset. We look at what that is, and then for adults, you actually double that. So that's four full productivity days of playtime. It doesn't have to be playing with your kids. It's just mental play. Go and expose yourself to something, even if you took 15 minutes today and turned off the TV. And I, even if you don't have kids or don't know any kids, do it for yourself. Because there's insights. Like Albert Einstein, right? The quote about Albert Einstein is about how imagination is greater than knowledge. You know, Miles Davis, the super famous jazz musician said, let me play something and then I'll tell you what it is. We're too focused on defining what we're supposed to deliver and then going and creating it. Nobody delivers amazing things like that. And I'm not saying we all have to go out and paint a Mona Lisa. What I'm talking about is, you know, a plumber and the wrong things are sent to his work site. He's either gonna figure it out or get fired. So give your kids the opportunity to think. That's the X factor. Give them the ability to have confidence to make their own decisions. I'm sure hoping that for my kids, what they grow up with is opportunities and the ability to think for themselves, have the confidence to say what they think, and they're not afraid of what other people have to say. Personally, I think if people are judging you, you're probably on the right track to doing something that's unique and different in the world, as opposed to just regurgitating the same things that we've been doing forever. You know, I don't think anybody would say to Albert Einstein, like, pump the brakes, Albert, you're a bit too radical. <laughs> you know, forget about relativity and all that crazy business, right? Everybody's a fan because he was being unconventional in his thought. And, he, and there were people who doubted him. I mean, you could go through a long list of any, anyone in this room can think of any single person they look up to or a mentor or someone who's inspired you today and they did something that other people judged, thought was crazy. They did it with passion. They did it with heart, and they did it by letting their mind get a word in edgewise through playful thinking. And I think the message here really is about, first and foremost, giving yourself an opportunity to do that. And then secondly, exposing those things to the kids around you so that they too can experience that kind of wonder. You know, this is where I started, right? And then one day, and I can remember it, someone in science class at school, thank you school, I mean there's a lot of use for it, but said that the sun is a star. And it took me right back to this picture. I thought, oh, damn it, I knew that. <laughs> right? This is what I could have drawn. And so the only limiting factor is what it is that people tell you and you believe. So thank God I told that woman to piss off. Because this is the kind of thing I hope my kids can see in their future. And I hope for all of you, you allow yourselves to. Thanks. <laughs>